The following documents and recordings are the second instalment in a compilation detailing the events of Graeme Kazan's return to Svalbard, following the occurrences of Outpost Freestead and Base Camp Piedra. Mr. Kasner was accompanied by fellow specialist Dracana Vukovic, archaeology professor Dr. Josefa Guerrero, and oceanographer Dr. Amelia Murray. In the summer months, Arctic cyclones are the foremost type of hazardous weather present in areas across the northern Atlantic, northern Pacific, and North Seas, capable of developing tumultuous sea conditions, impacting sea ice, dropping heavy precipitation, and resulting in avalanches. These Arctic cyclones can severely impact the lives of local populations. During these storms, travel is not advised. The White Vault Following the previous compilation, Mr. Kasner, Ms. Vukovic, Dr. Guerrero, and Dr. Murray began the helicopter flight to Nialasund. The flight to Nialasund covered the 120 kilometers in approximately half an hour. During the flight, both Mr. Kasner and Ms. Vukovic turned their body cameras back on. Around the time of the group's flight, I was at a cafe in Stockholm, waiting out the hours until my return flight to England. Halfway into my second cup of tea, a black car pulled up in front of the cafe. This first recording is from my phone, starting at the point at which I noticed my mother exiting the vehicle. It has now been over a month since the deep water horizon on the last of the day killed the leather workers and led to the largest oil spill in the history of marine drilling. En liten kaffetack och sänk tv. I knew you would find me. I said I would. There was no reason to lie. You look troubled, dear. Now I have to examine everything I see with a critical eye. Every disaster. The oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. Is it related to the sites? The timeline matches up with the events in Svalbard. The Deepwater Horizon oil spill is an avoidable human disaster. Our companies... <clears throat> there are several pieces to this. <sighs> Our companies, those run by members of the larger family, do not suffer such mistakes. Our work keeps us safe. Our luck keeps us safe. The safety of our company keeps us inconspicuous, so that the cycle can continue uninterrupted. Not every disaster is due to a mistake in the cycle. In fact, man-made disasters almost never tend to be. Humanity is perfectly able to destroy itself without outside interference. So you can promise me it has nothing to do with sites or guardians or murder? Tack. No. While I do not currently believe it to be related, I do not want to rule it out in case of new information. Perhaps something caused the leak other than what is generally accepted. The ocean is a dangerous and mysterious place. Just as we have only begun to scientifically study the terrestrial sites that we have access to, we have even less information on what exists in the oceans. What do you know is down there? Guardians, so far. Where? How many? We don't know. They are mobile. If I stay, will you tell me the whole truth without lies or lapses? I have to. And more than that, I want to. You are my daughter and the future. I thought leaving you out of this would protect you, and I have failed. Now, you need to know everything. My mother and I continued the conversation for some time. The section immediately following the previous recording was personal and thus excluded from the collected record. It referred only to my mother and father's past relationship, my time growing up in England, 
and the current state of my father given our recent communication. The following recording comes from the onboard headset during the team's descent into Nyarlison. Visibility outside the helicopter is greatly obscured, with fog and wind in the endless sunlight encompassing the craft in white. Dr. Murray and Dr. Guerrero, who can be seen seated in the back of the helicopter, are scanning the fog. What am I looking for? Shadows. It will most likely stay far enough away if it's here at all. A shadow of what? Something too big. Well, I guess I would notice that. Wind speed is picking up. Yes, I know. I can feel it. But visibility is increasing. Below, yes, but not above. That's concerning. How near are we to the Alessand? Nearing. Everyone, hold on. We're going to start to slow, and I'm going to bring us around slightly. From what I can tell, those lights in the white are in the helipad. They are. It should be just south of the fueling station. Perfect. Not too rusty, given that I haven't done this in years. <laughs> years? <laughs> Don't get picky now, Josefa. It's me or nothing. Yes, of course. Please continue and fly safely. This feels like a terrible idea, now that I've had more time to think about it. And I have to say, I am not enjoying the flight into the empty white. How can you tell where we're going? Instrument readings, meters, all the stuff I'm focusing on right now. Yes, right. I can't remember the last time we flew together. We just took half a dozen flights to get this far. <laughs> sure. I don't want to miss out on a rare uh, Graham Kessler trip into memory lane, but again, I am trying to fly. Descending toward landing zone. Now at 15 meters. Reducing speed. I can't see shit down there. We're clear in coming from the south. Nearest buildings are maybe 30 meters north-northeast. Graham, I need your eyes down there. Our approach to the LZ is going to kick up a cloud of snow or dust, I don't know. Either way, I'll need some extra help. Get down there, clear the tail, and call out our descent. Fine. Give me a sec to climb back and get on the intercom. I'll clear us on the way down. on the ground before we can safely set down. Move your legs. Keep your hands away from the ropes and door. Yes. Well, then, be careful. Graham, you ready? Is it clear? Graham, I thought I saw something on the front. Maybe four meters out? The recording from the helicopter cuts there, but the events from the landing pick up from the team's body cameras. The relevant section of recording begins here, with footage from Miss Vukovic's body camera. to approach the town quietly, but the helicopter gave away our arrival. We need to get to the snowmobiles in the recreation storage. We can use them to get outside of town. Gave away? Don't we want to find the others? The emergency response snowmobiles would be better outfitted. 
There's a high probability that those are already gone. The video of the sky shows a great mass of white clouds, with a singular point of blue sky briefly visible before it becomes swallowed up. The extreme lack of visibility appears to worsen quickly, pulling in closer to the helicopter until even the tail is no longer visible. At the corners of the helipad, red lights can be seen only by their indistinct glow. Is this normal weather for a storm? It's like it just swallowed us up. We're not getting out of here. The shore is not usually audible from this far in. Stay away from the water. Not everything we hear is wind and water. I'll unload the medical supplies, then we can go. No, leave the supplies in the helicopter for now. The whole reason I'm here is to get these supplies to Nialisant. And they're in Nialisant, but until we know it's safe, it's better to go unburdened and be ready for confrontation. What kind of confrontation are you expecting from people in need? First, we get into town. Then we'll know. Amelia, once we confirm it's safe, you can come back for the supplies. For now, I think they should remain in the helicopter. Because of those dangerous animals you told me about? Yes. We need to be able to move quickly. When we find the snowmobiles, we can come back for the supplies. It will be easier with the transport anyways. Let's get going then. Weather's worsening by the second. Do you know the way, Gretel? Yes. Follow me and stay low. Never assume the path is clear, and don't underestimate anything you hear. Hold on to the pack the person in front of you, and if you don't feel someone holding on to your pack, check. Dragana, take the rear. Does he know where he's going? The medical building is across the main street and further inland. It's a small facility like most buildings here. In this fog, we may miss it. Dr. Murray, please stay quiet for now. They're here, in town. Cuando lo ves. Dragana, get up here. <gasps> what? It looks like something was dragged, but dirt is covering much of the blood. Some of it, but there are drops here that look fresh, uncovered. And at least someone was alive until recently. There may still be survivors. We have to make it to the side. We can't stay here to help. Dragana, how's that? Shit! Where's Dr. Murray? Not over here. That way. Careful. She was gone. Only for a moment. Still, be careful. Doctor, don't just walk off. Look. That's bigger. What can do that? They can. While Miss Vukovic's camera was not pointed in the direction of the area being discussed, Dr. Guerrero's and Mr. Kasner's cameras were. The red wooden building in front of them was torn open at the door. The wood was splintered around the frame and the boards above the entrance were scattered on the ground. The door itself was nowhere to be seen. A pile of mangled bikes near the door frame were toppled over, as though they had been hastily discarded and then crushed. And large claw marks along the wooden platform and floor directly inside the door show that the building had been invaded after the destruction. Miss Vukovic's camera angle captured two other buildings. A yellow building, only visible briefly, had damage along the siding as though a sharp object had been dragged across the siding under great pressure. Another building, which Miss Vukovic approached, was not damaged, though the door was left wide open and dirt was piling up inside. The following recording is a continuation of the previous section, but from Dr. Guerrero's body camera. The next door down is wide open. Every building on this street. Something's wrong. Something came down here. <sighs> one of them. More than one. It's cut through it like paper. What did this? This isn't just some dangerous animal. 
you came in and prepared for this, you knew. We didn't know. But we feared it would be like this. It's here. Back, near the plot, across the street, there was a building that looked intact. This way. Hurry. Stay down, under the window line. Stay here. That's as far as it should go. Okay. Why wasn't the door locked? All the other buildings were in disrepair. If the other buildings did not protect them, why would this one? Can you hear it? Some of the other buildings, the doors were wide open. Stop. Do you hear it? What? Liat, who's my last best problem? Everyone stay quiet and low and follow me. It sounds like we're not alone in here. Survivors. I can hear them. Over there in the back room. Stay behind me. Dragana, watch our backs. It stopped. They will not stop. Not for long. Dragana, watch out! <laughs> Get under the table. Make a break for the door when we get it open. Let go of me! Shoot them! Oh, no. I'm not shooting anyone! For what? Are you in on this? What, what's happening? Tell them to stop! They should not stop. They are trying to help. To help put everything right and protect this world. Protect it for the future, for the children. Do you have children, Dr. Mara? What? Please, try. Cover your eyes, then get ready to run. Run. Dracona! Hold it close! Hold it close! Hold it Hold it close! Hold it close! it 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 you shot someone. The, the people, Dragana. If we are, they're all smart people. One of them should be the right type of doctor. Granted, they're all nuts. They're still human. We aren't killers. Good thing I only shot him in the arm then. Like I said, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. They all gathered there, or someone locked them in there. It's not safe to stay here. The medical building isn't far. The zip ties will lock them in there for now. But the creature's still out there. Someone hand me that chair. Yes. The dangerous animal. I feel as though that was a significant understatement. <coughs> I thought you meant a polar bear. Or a particularly angry vole. They won't hurt us. Oh, my ribs have a differing opinion. They can bring us to the side. No, no more people, no more chanting, no more stops. We'll check the road, then get to the medical building for Dr. Murray. We can leave her there. The snowmobile storage is not too far after that. The creature. Do you think it will come in here after them, if we keep them locked in like this? Are they in more danger? They were in here before. Dragana's right. We can't worry about them. 
When the group left the building, they remained quiet even given the events that transpired outside. Mr. Kasner had remained at the front of the team, and so has the camera with the best viewpoint. As they rounded the corner of the building to move on toward the medical centre, Mr. Kasner stumbled and halted quickly, first turning to signal the others, then turning back around to examine the corpse of a man left on the road in a patch of bloodied gravel and unmelted ice. The body had been slashed open at a diagonal, but the blood-soaked clothing and tattered red ski jacket obscured much of the injury. The man's face was relatively calm, though his eyes remained open. Dr. Guerrero stepped forward to close the man's eyes, and indicated with her hand the body was still warm. The team continued on. Though Dr. Guerrero made this later passage in her provided notebook, which referred to the previous interaction with the chanting survivors, and the location of the corpse. Cuando entramos corriendo al edificio, me quedó claro que había quedado intacto. Adentro estaban los demás, cada uno repitiendo la verdad con una mente abierta. Y estaban a salvo. Habían visto y sido vistos. Habían oído. When we ran into the building, it was clear to me that it had been left alone. Inside were the others each repeating the truth with an open mind, and they were safe. They had seen and been seen. They had heard and been heard. And because of this, they had been left alone for now. They were not the goal of this rampant destruction. And indeed, they could have brought us to the side. They would have walked there, across the glaciers and snows, until their limbs turned black and their skin peeled. Perhaps they will live but without guidance, they will never be free. They had been seen. They were not the goal. A dead man was left in the streets of Nialesand, body laying on the side of the road. The town has been torn open. Never in the records, in the clips, or in my strange dreams has this kind of wanton death been documented. They must be confused, or even worse, perhaps they are panicked. If they had a task set before them, and they have failed, and the hole in the net widens, surely they can see only one way forward. They are looking for the end, and they cannot find it. The man left on the road felt so familiar. He was around my age, around that of Graham and Dragana. He looked like Graham, bearded, gray-eyed, sun-worn. His wands were still steaming in the cool of the fog when we found him. He had not been that long. Perhaps he had been one of the others in the building, or a lone survivor. Regardless, he crossed paths with a creature with only a singular goal. They're looking for him, and they're in a hurry. The following recording comes from Mr. Kasner's body camera 10 minutes after the previous camera recording ended. The team had slowly traversed Niala Sun through the fog and located the local medical building. The door was ajar when they approached. It's open. It will not be safe to leave Dr. Murray here. Figure that out once we get inside. No one's here. Graham. It got in. But not before the others. Look. The stores have been picked over methodically. Most of the emergency medical supplies have been taken. Someone, or more likely several people, took what they could before the wall was broken. Once they saw what was going on, survivors could have raided the buildings for supplies and headed to the safest location. None of the wooden frame buildings seemed to hold up. What is the most secure building in Nialesen? 
that we haven't already passed by. Perhaps the weather station. Perhaps. Truthfully, I've never been here before. I just studied the maps before I arrived. I started a new job with a research firm, and this is my first assignment on Svalbard. You picked one hell of a time to impress your boss, but you're not wrong. The weather station is an elevated metal building powered by solar and wind generators built for year-round habitation. It should be the strongest and most defensible building. Where is it? We can't spend too much longer in here. Over there. Get down. Don't stand in front of the windows. Sorry. Was it there? They are always there. But I saw lights where you were pointing. A red light in the fog. The weather station has an emergency light. It's near enough. We can make it. Should we bring any extra supplies? If we're here, we have the opportunity. They knew what they needed when they were here. Stay unburdened and let's get there. Ready? Yes. Ready? Yes. Get moving. Tutnikarana Nevidna. in there, they can open it. Do you think they're still alive in there? Don't speculate. We'll get inside. There should be a roof hatch for access to the array. This way. I'll go up first. Keep an eye below and around you. When I'm up, I'll tap the ladder three times if it's clear. Then come up quickly but quietly. Be careful, Crayon. This concludes the second set of documents and recordings from the team's return to Svalbard and completes this section of information regarding the team's travel into Nialasund and their attempts to locate a means of reaching the site. The White Vault 